That was beautiful. <laughs> that was really beautiful. In the name of the King of Life, in the name of the Christ of Love, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the triune of our strength. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Again, such a special day being here with all of you. Trinity Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, so much to remember and so much to be thankful for. And we do thank God. Some extra words from the book of Lamentations. You, O Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. It's a reminder that every Sunday is the Lord's day. We have one God in three persons, and God is very, very powerful and loving and caring of each one of us. You know that I work at the jail still as one of the chaplains, and during this past week, I was walking down the hall, and one of the men looked down and yelled at me, Yay, God, sister! <laughs> So today, and maybe every day, I would add to you, yay, God, sisters and brothers. Because today and every day are very special days. I think about the purity of spirit that that man had in shouting those words down the hallway, and we could think about it with all the hallways of our lives. Those words allow us to remember that God is powerful, and generous and loving, and is always with us, wonderfully, mysteriously, lovingly, and sometimes surprisingly so. We need never doubt that. So in Trinity fashion, we could say, God, you are our Father. You are our Creator, and your artistry is very beautiful. It's unpredictable, and it's powerful. We could also say, God, you are alive. You burst into our dreams. You are alive in the ministry, heart, and actions of Jesus. And you share all of that with us so wonderfully. You share that power and you make that potential available to each one of us. And God, the Holy Spirit, you are constantly pulsing through our blood our veins, and the vessels of our beings. Your Holy Spirit is constantly on the move in our lives. So, yay, God! <laughs> having heard the scripture this morning, and other days too, and having prayed in our own quiet moments, and praying too in and through the church each week, what are we brought to say about God today on Trinity Sunday? What are we to say to God? What have we said about God lately? What have we said to God lately? Maybe we've said, where are you? Are you listening to us? God, are you helping us? Do you see us? Do you hear us? What do we need to do to see, to hear, and to feel you near us? Or maybe we just say, thank you, God, for my family, for my friends, for the church, for this beautiful day. What are the things that we say to God, especially today? Take a breath for a minute and just say something to God right now within yourself. When I was about five or six years old, I had something that I thought was really important to say to God one Sunday morning in church. And it was something like this. I said, God, are you really here with us now? I remember that right about that moment in my mind, it was simultaneously, Mrs. Eldred, the church organist, started singing at the top of her lungs, and she was pummeling the keys and, and pumping away at the pedals of the big old organ in that church. And she was singing, this is my father's world. Remember that hymn? And to my listening ears. And it goes on. 
She was a little woman. And here she was banging away on those keys. And it, I say that not disparagingly. She was doing a great job. Her feet barely reached those pedals. But her playing and singing were exuberant. They were powerful. And I was a little kid, and I thought, that's God up there playing away and leading the congregation in song. I was convinced of it. And then maybe what was a few minutes later, my dad, who was the minister of the church, started preaching a sermon that seemed to shake the stained glass windows around the sanctuary. He was probably saying something like, wake up out there. The Holy Spirit has work assignments for all of us. My dad, in his usual fashion, was shouting, and it was all in love. There was nothing angry about it, but he wanted to be heard. He was wrapping his hands on the pulpit. He wanted everyone to get stirred up. And it, again, to me, at that time, it felt like God was advancing on us in a mysteriously wonderful way. And in my little five- or six-year-old mind, I was a little suspicious as I thought, God, how did you get here from the, the organ? Why did you get to the pulpit so fast? And then, somewhere around then, my brother Eddie decided that he had to go to the bathroom. And he slid quietly out of the pew, only to drop through a grate in the floor along the side aisle of the church. People went, oh! They gasped. But almost as quickly as he disappeared down into that hole, he rose up like a diver with a bag of pearls. <laughs> and he caused everybody to clap and cheer. And I was thinking maybe I said something like, thank you, God, for getting over here and saving my brother. And in my wee little mind and spirit, I was absolutely certain that, yes, God was there with us that day that God had put on flesh in three different people and in three different places all at the same time. And of course, we know that God is always with us, every single one of us, in the flesh and in the spirit, that God connects eternally to and moves dynamically in all of us everywhere and all the time, no matter where we are. We can be asleep. It's a gift. It's a mystery. We cannot explain it. We can't fully comprehend it, and that's okay. Because we are just invited to believe it, to enjoy it, and to treasure it throughout our lives. So, let's be sure that we are saying something about and to God every day. It's okay to ask, where are you, God? Where are you in all the violence, all the unrest, all the hunger and illness? Where are you, God, in all the disparities and challenges and distortions of life today? But at the same time, may we mindfully and faithfully grow in greater confidence that God is present. God has healing and redemption and love to pour out on our lives all the time. We don't know how it happens. How can it happen? We don't know, but we believe it. We heard in the Isaiah reading, remember that, about how Isaiah was called by God, and he answered, here I am. But one of the things that he was saying to the people at that time, uh, when uh, the time of King Uzziah, was, they were very prosperous at that time, and so they, they felt like they didn't re really need God that much. And Isaiah's saying, don't ever abandon God, no matter what's going on in your lives, so good or bad. Don't turn away from God. Be sensitive to God's immediate presence in our world and allow ourselves, no matter what is going on, to be touched and filled with God's glory even and especially in our broken world, or in our happy world, no matter what. When we read together Psalm 29, I don't know if you caught it, you probably did. The psalmist, probably David, is saying, God has this fantastic power, and God is generous. God wants to share all of that power with us, make it readily available, so that we can work effectively and faithfully 
with any kind of issue that is going on in our present time. In Paul's letter to the Romans, that is reinforced. He says again, like he always does, it's so Paul. He said, the Holy Spirit is in us, lives in us, dwells in us. We were born with it. We kind of ignore it every now and then. But all of us are always part of God's spirit. We are part of that divine dance and that music. And we are part of God's best gifts. There are a whole list of them. Some of those gifts are his son, the Holy Spirit, love, forgiveness, baptism, communion, salvation, and eternal life. Yay, God! John's Gospel reading for this morning has that little three, John 3.16 that's so familiar to all of us. But the whole thing is amazing. You might want to read it when you go home today. Again. Read it again. It's about Nicodemus. He is a Jewish Pharisee, and he's a teacher of Israel. And he comes to Jesus in the night. And he has a lot to lose by doing that. He could lose his security, his position, and his power. But he chose to come to Jesus personally because he admires him. He obviously admires him. And he starts asking Jesus some very deep, genuine questions. You and I can do that too at any given time. We can come out of the darkness of our own lives and get promised a whole new day dawning with God's actions beginning anew through prayer and love and belief, especially that we heard in 316, we can always have what Jesus offered Nicodemus, a healthy, lasting relationship with God, a spiritual rebirth, and a ticket to eternal life. And you know, I've heard a lot of, you know, I've done this myself lately, you know, I think, oh gosh, I want to go back to what we had before. I can't wait till things get back to normal. And we don't want to do that. As Christians, we want to say, I want a brand new life from God. Because that is what we are promised. That's what we heard in all of these scriptures today and that we hear all the time. When we consider everything that we've been through the past 14 plus months, Let's not ask for a return to the old life. Let's not even ask to have that old life repaired. Let's be ready to receive a whole new life, which is a mysteriously wonderful gift from our one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are promised that day by day, not just today, but day by day. So... The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is going to be with us forever. Yay. Thank you, God. God, you are a mystery, and yet we choose to believe you and love you always and know that you believe in us and you love us always. Thank you, God. Amen.